there, there's a there's an old saying. Maybe it's a cliche. And look, we're we're told in this business, don't be cliche, right? Don't be cliche. Don't be cliche. But when the going gets tough, the tough do in fact get going, don't they? Defense does in fact win championships. Now we could sit here and go, well. Doug, the Niners' defense is the best defense in the league. They didn't win a championship. Yeah, but the, the Chiefs don't come back and win that game if Chris Jones doesn't bat down a couple balls, if they don't get four consecutive stops when down 10 in the Super Bowl. Defense does win championships, right? We, we rave about the Golden State Warriors and their shooting, but during their championship runs, analytics would tell you they were, with the exception of one year, the best defensive teams in basketball. So cliches can be true. Matter of fact, they are generally true. They're just overused expressions. Here's one. Necessity is the root of all invention. I screwed it up again. Did I screw it up again? Take two. Necessity is the mother of all invention. Same thing, really, right? Finally nailed it, Gottlieb. That's what happened last night with the Houston Rockets. Now, long-term we will discuss. But short term, they, they did the thing which I love. You know, we talk about whether you're apps or desserts. I'm like, why do, the, why do the appetizer? Just bring me two entrees. I'd rather have an additional entree than have a dessert. And matter of fact, that's one of the reasons I like apps over desserts is it's usually a mini entree. Why not just play your five best players at once? Well, what happens if your tallest players six foot six, like Daniel House? Okay. So the Houston Rockets trade away Clint Capella. And many predict gloom and doom. And it is something that you kind of scratch your head at because, well, everybody has a rim protector in the NBA, right? Everyone who runs pick and roll, and it's called spread game, has a roller, has a rim protector, has somebody who defends the rim and rolls to the rim and finishes, and that's what Clint Capella, though overpaid, was doing. Uh, I am a broadcaster, a former college basketball player, former professional player, and I've also been a coach. Coach teams overseas. I've coached in the, the TBT, the basketball tournament. I've also, I also coach youth teams. And when you get to a higher level of competition, collegiate or pros, what happened last night is what I have implored to college basketball coaches throughout the country, which is, hey, small ball works. It works. Now, the reason it works is not always just because you make a bunch of shots, Oftentimes, it's because of the other team's reaction to your lineup. And this actually starts at a very, very young age. Right? At a very young age. When you first start playing basketball, the biggest kid on the floor in rec basketball usually parks himself in the lane or just off the lane, puts his hand up, and every coach, every parent says, throw him the ball. And he's closer to the hoop, so he tries to throw it off the backboard and throw it in. And if he doesn't make it, he gets the rebound because he's bigger than everybody else. And he then keeps throwing it in there until he goes in. But a funny thing happened on the way to a win for the Lakers. See, look, I I'm not a believer that all analytics tell ever every bit of the story. But analytics tell a portion of this story, which is really, really important. Doug Gottlieb in for calling this The Herd on Fox Sports Radio and Fox Sports 1. The Lakers played right into the Rockets' hands. See, what happens when you have a diminutive lineup and you have LeBron James or you have Anthony Davis is you say, get down there, post up, we'll throw you the ball. Because that's what we've been taught for the last 30, 40, 50 years, right? It's a mismatch. When I played professional basketball, if I was caught on a big guy, you would immediately hear the bigger player say, mouse in the house, or just mouse. I got a little guy, give me the ball. And they'd give you the ball, and you felt like that was a sure two. Analytics tell us a completely different story. They tell us that, that shot in the post is actually an inefficient shot. If you like numbers, .777 is a post-up shot in the NBA. Guys practice it less. And even when they become, you know, lights out scores like Anthony Davis, you, they, 
All basketball players will tell you, you're allowed as a smaller player generally to be more physical, which makes a higher percentage shot a little bit lower percentage. But here's what analytics doesn't tell you. It doesn't just hurt you in the first shot. It hurts you because you stop running your offense. You know that thing that you've been working on since the beginning of training camp? All those sets, all those ball screens, right? The ability, LeBron James' best attribute is not as a post player. It's playing what's called downhill, going towards the basket. Well, when you're thrown into a mismatch in the post, that goes away. It just does. Everybody stands and stops, and it becomes 1990s NBA basketball. Throw it to Pat Ewing, and he goes to work, and if you double team, he kicks out for a three. The other part it hurts you on is your ability to rebound the basketball. You would think that because you're bigger than the other team, well, you can just crash the glass and rebound. And maybe to a certain extent you can. But one, the defense knows that, so they'll box out more. Two, when you have a guy at the post, I want you to picture this, like Anthony Davis, he catches the ball. He has a defender on him. He shoots the basketball or somebody else shoots the basketball. There's a man between him and the basket. Makes it easier to box out. As opposed to when you're running screen and roll and somebody shoots, that same big guy has a running start who's nearly impossible to box out. You're making yourself easier to defend. You're shooting less efficient shots. You're getting out of your offense, and you're easier to box out. And, oh, yeah, by the way, because you have a size advantage on the boards, generally guys crash the boards more. What happens when you do that? The back end's open, and now the other team can transition better. Look, the Houston Rockets played with a center last night. His name is Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook, you thought he was a point guard. No, no, no. All you have to have is one what's called a clogger. One guy doesn't, doesn't shoot that well. That's okay. One two-point shooter. The rest are three-point shooters. Nobody's in the lane. It makes you really hard to defend. And instead of having Clint Capella and Russell Westbrook, two cloggers, if you will, two guys who clog up the lane, who can help on James Harden, who can help on different drives, who can help rebounding, now there's no help. If you help, he kicks off, they shoot a three. Yes, the game plan is to expose your mismatch and to beat you off the dribble and to find your big guy and beat him like they beat Kyle Kuzma last night, your weak defender, sure, on offense, but actually takes you out of your offense at your own end. All that stuff, all the plays you practice, they all go out the window because you're like, we got a mismatch. That was from Spectrum Sportsnet. After the game, Frank Vogel going, that's the understatement of the year. It actually screwed us up on offense that we had a size advantage every time down the court, and we tried to take advantage of it. Played in their hands. Meanwhile, when you play small, your shooting percentage is better, your turnovers are lower, your three-point percentage is better, and you know, more, most importantly, you know what your weakness is, so it's easier to at least know how they're going to attack you. Necessity is the mother of all invention, and the Houston Rockets were stuck. They were stuck, right? They couldn't play any other way and be, they tried with Clint Capella, you know, they... They've, they've tried with stretch bigs. They've tried all this different. Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook, it wasn't working. You know what? The hell with it. Let's just, instead of having a small ball lineup at the end of the game, like the Warriors who had their death lineup, what if we did it the entire game? Dr. Oz had a uh, New Year's resolution for America. You guys know who Dr. Oz is? He's like America's doctor. And, and he said to stop eating breakfast. Stop eating breakfast. And you're sitting there and you're, you're got your Frosted Flakes and you're looking up and you're like, Gottlieb, one, you're not cow herd, and two, I like Frosted Flakes. Why do I have to stop eating them? Well, I was taught as a kid that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. In addition to breakfast foods generally being filled with carbs and sugar, right, which is even more carbs, right? right? Because, I mean, think about breakfast foods, right? Between cereal, which is carbs, or pancakes or waffles or whatever. Sure, you can do what Shannon Sharp does if you have discipline. He eats egg whites and oatmeal every day for 20 years. Ask him. It's amazing, right? But most people don't. The, the whole breakfast is the most important meal of the day. That was from a breakfast company. That, that was from a breakfast company. You were sold a bale of goods. Just like the whole idea of, hey, we got to throw it to the big guy. Mismatch. Yeah, well, it's actually better for you to not eat breakfast and to get right to the substantial meals of the day if you want to do the fasting thing or eat quality foods. 
You know, you can eat a salad for breakfast. You can eat chicken for breakfast. That's fine. Bre breakfast is not, the breakfast foods are not the most important meal of the day. You actually don't need to satisfy your hunger. And when you're super hungry coming off of sleep, the first thing you do is put sugar in your system. It actually is worse than not eating. That's the same thing as what you've always been taught about basketball, which is when you have a mismatch, forget everything else, throw it inside. Mouse in the house. Don't believe me? The Lakers, who were trying to show off for Darren Collison, who was on like a recruiting visit last night, end up kind of embarrassing themselves by getting completely out of sorts because they're like, hey, their tallest guy is 6'6", and we got Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Oops. This show, other shows, we have a tendency to kill analytics. Last night was a win. Last night was a win. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.